Anime director Shinichiro Watanabe is a Kyoto, Japan bred Gemini, born on the year of the snake. Of course you know who he is because you love his classics, Cowboy Bebop, Samurai Champloo, Macross Plus. If you haven't experienced any of these, then you surely found yourself swaying to the assorted soulful tunes of the musical Martian journey of Carolyn Tuesday, explored the infinitely bizarre universe of space dandy. If none of those rang a bell, then buckle up, because you're about to be introduced to easily one of the greatest and most prolific anime directors of all time. Shinichiro Watanabe. He started out as a self-studied scholar of cinema who originally aspired to filmmaking, Western filmmaking. In 1994, he went into his working position at Studio Nippon Sunrise with this desire and ability in mind. It would be here that Shinichiro Watanabe would meet the creator of Macross Plus, Shoji Kawamori, and some commercial music lady called Yoko Kano? His body of work and love for entertainment from around the world would be instrumental in him becoming a cultural bridge by introducing various vibes and media arts of the West to the farthest Eastern animations. He makes the Otaku Gateway series you show your friends who say they don't like anime, only to embarrass them because they don't know any better. Watanabe expanded his influence by essentially sticking to his goal and going against the industrial grain, where, on average, anime production companies were regulating themselves to safety genre of shonen, shoujo, or kodomo, adapting pre-existing intelligent manga properties, hoping to maybe sell a hobby mech model kit or two, Watanabe went beyond Super Saiyan. During his solo directorial debut with Cowboy Bebop in 1998, Sunrise and Bandai wanted to appease the capitalist toyetic gods, but Watanabe, though it almost ended his career, wanted to tell a great original story. Just over 20 years after episode 4 of New Hope hit theaters, the syndicated television world was introduced to a new hope of its own. Where Star Wars was a space samurai western opera, Cowboy Bebop was a western space cowboy opus. Shinichiro Watanabe, with everything in his repertoire, put in the work to make sure this damn directorial debut would be all the heavens meant for it to be. Subverted were the traditional archetypal anime journey. Watanabe, living for 2071, had to have an uncanny foresight into several aspects aspects of the infinite and beyond while crafting a finite narrative. Back when we were making Cowboy Bebop, Watanabe said to Otaku USA Magazine, one thing I told the staff was, let's make a show that does not feel dated in 10 or 20 years. Nailed it. Cooked up by Hajime Yatate, a pseudonym for a group of Sunrise Animation employees with Watanabe as project head, they blessed us with 26 award-winning anime episodes of adult-themed cosmic bounty hunting goodness. Crafty morsels you can pop in and out of your mouth, regardless of episode number. The series slathered in heaps of sci-pop culture sauce, topped off with a rich, creamy, cinematic main course experience. In the beginning of the broadcast phases, the fate of the series was <laughs> knocking on heaven's door, but the otaku gods had other plans. At the collaborative creative helm were names like the screenwritings of Dai Sato, a knockout English dub freshman performance from voice actor Steve Bloom, all dancing to the tunes of Nihonjin musical goddess Yoko Kano. It was here, with his first and frequent music collaborator and soul sister, that we get the feel of how Watanabe fills his series with soul. Let's talk about jazz, man. And I'd love to elaborate on the majestic Yoko Kano, but we'll get to her. This video is about Shinichiro. Watanabe treats his music as if it's a character in a show, a prominent part of the story, playing in party perspectives one through three. He collaborates with virtuosos who have mastered their instruments, artists who know how to make music that moves you, tampering with your emotions while in the same vein inducing the sincerity of his creations. He has created scenes based around Yoko Kano's impulsive, unrequested music. That's jazz. That's bebop. Trusting your band as they are good at what they do. Rock steady on a rhythm so another instrument solo can shine. An early lesson Watanabe learned from Ryosuke Takahashi. No, 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 not that, not that one, no. From fellow Sunrise screenwriter, director, producer, Ryosuke Takahashi. There, there we go. Like any self-taught cook, Watanabe likes to walk up ingredients you'd think don't belong or match and make a tasty, well-seasoned multimedia meal out of it. Champuru, 
an Okinawan word which means to be mixed or blended together pretty much sums up an aspect of his creative being. A space-time collapse. 1660s Edo era Nihon has collided with the birthplace of hip-hop. USA 2004. In Samurai Champloo, Watanabe's anachronistic Chanbara venture is the katsu fried chicken and collard green dinner we didn't know we wanted. Hmm. One third of the show's main character, Mugen, which means infinite, was born out of Shinichiro Watanabe's listening to hip hop. Mugen was almost born a rapper. Instead, we got a wild style Ronin esque b boy versed in the Afro Brazilian martial art of capoeira. This Champlu project further reinforces just how ontological the relationship is between Watanabe's stories and the musical artists with which he chooses to collaborate, a habit consistently pushing him far enough beyond the conventional, where his genius lives. With Team Watanabe as the MC, Samurai Champloo's soundtrack was born out of collaboration with hip hop artists Fat John, Force of Nature, Nujabes, and Suchie. As a fan, Watanabe gave these artists free will to do what they do best and create an honor of his developing amalgamated world. He wanted authentic hip hop, that East Coast boom bap steez, that percussion, the rap, the sampling, the lo fi. It was perfect. Hip-hop thrived in and was born out of the remixing of funk, blues, and jazz. Those same genre live at the core of Watanabe's own soul, as he has just begun to show. And I'm going to take a quick moment here to share a perspective of I, hi, Ra. Before this, black people weren't really present in anime outside of a lot of out-of-date Western-influenced depictions and a couple of bit roles. We didn't really have a respectable presence in anime or manga realms. In Samurai Champloo, the world's youngest black culture, the hip-hop fashion and style, its aesthetic, served as an interwoven foundation to an entire Nihonjin saga. For the first time ever, black culture was not only embraced by but celebrated as a prominent force by anime. It was dope, continuously inspiring, and an effective use of the gateway. With his affinity for music and capacity for inspiration, he found himself teamed with Brazilian band The Plus Twos as a music producer on the clearly Cowboy Bebop inspired anime Michiko Tohachi. A couple years later, Yoko Kano returned to his side as he directs the late 1960s post-World War II Japan coming-of-age story, Kids on the Slope, only digging deeper into his passion for music and jazz, making sure to do the instrumentalists justice rotoscoping their animations when they're exercising and performing their craft, a technique he'd return to in a future series. Space Dandy. Space Dandy, Watanabe's character centralized disco genius party had at least 20 different artists work on the music. The series plays like a compilation CD of deep philosophies in an assorted bag of well-wrapped absurd candy flavors. It wasn't the meal a lot of people expected, but in retrospect, they realized that the center of each dimension hopping piece was a conscious nugget of nutrition, like a less mature Rick and Morty skipped the trauma and family therapy to go on a quantum entity misadventure for new life forms and boobies. The cat and mouse drama riddled with explosives, Terra and Resonance, was inspired by a vision brought on by Icelandic naptime music maker Sigur Rós. Because getting the band to do the soundtrack would have been too expensive, Watanabe's passion for the idea drove him to do the next best thing and produce the OST in Iceland near Sigur Rós. Close enough. The music we won't have recorded in its conceptual home anytime soon comes from Cowl and Tuesday, a beautiful Martian journey following a talented duo of teenage singer-songwriters from two completely different life classes, pitting their analog expressions against the best AI music production money can buy, pursuing their dream while navigating geo and industry politics, each episode titled after a hit song. The Studio Bones crafted series has reminiscent and updated elements 
components from Macross Plus, while at the same time playing in current technologies. The first half of the series crest in an extraordinary tournament arc that mirrors our own modern obsession with Got Talent shows, full of pleasant surprises, a fantastic variation of a trope so common in anime, accompanied by an OST that could cause friction in the most psycho of thugs. We're talking goosebumps, full-on pilo erection with hair standing starch at the tips. For Shinichiro Watanabe, the music is just as prominent and important a character as its animated counterparts. His series are like whole albums, the episodes like songs themselves, each one a potential hit single. 12, a savant from terror and resonance, is synesthetic, a condition where one sense is simultaneously perceived by one or more additional sense. He sees sound as color, that in itself like Watanabe's own ability with which he paints. But Shinichiro Watanabe not only visualizes the music, he transcribes good music, making a part of his own visual overtures, allowing them to transcend time and language. He unapologetically and seamlessly integrates that which he loves into his work, further expanding the diversity of his creations, tuning into new harmonies. The medley of characters in his work shows his appreciation for our world, our universe. Shinichiro Watanabe went into the industry to the beat of his own drum and found his tribe in the sunrise, where he'd carve out his own path on blessing of the otaku gods. He bent the anime law to his will and was born a great conductor and composer with a dynamic range for potential. His music style, bebop, champuru, taking the rules, observing, and understanding them, only to respectfully fold and mold them into something all its own. Music, his divine muse, anime, his destined filter.